Hello and a very warm welcome back to the garden. Now small scale gardens are often more productive per square foot or per square metre than larger gardens because you've got to be more clever and creative when it comes to planting them up. And in this video it's a collaboration with Tim and Maddie Harland from the Permaculture magazine about 10 tips for growing food and maximising productivity in small spaces. So here's Tim and Maddie to introduce themselves. Hi, I'm Maddie Harland and I'm Tim Harland and we're from Permaculture magazine and this is our small raised bed no dig garden. It's only about 12 by 15 metres but in here we grow a huge amount of annual veg for us and, and our guests. If you want to find out more about their YouTube channel and also the Permaculture magazine, which I highly recommend, then there'll be links down below in the description. Now, let's get started with the tips. The first tip I would give anyone is if you've only got a small space, grow salad. Salad is expensive to buy and when you buy it in those plastic bags in the shops, it's often washed with chlorinated water. We're growing lots and lots of variety here and we only planted this eight weeks ago. We've got bunyard's lettuce and another type of lettuce, wild rocket and mizuna and mabuna, a mustard green over there, a beautiful oak leaf lettuce, some pak choy and even some delicious white radishes. It's so easy, it saves you money it's also something that we can sow successionally so once we've eaten all the radishes we'll replenish with a bit of compost and sow another crop and we'll keep this bed going all summer. I couldn't agree more with what Maddie says about salads but one of the downsides of salads is if you don't have enough water they can often bolt for example lettuce and one of the best ways to prevent bolting is by watering them frequently. Now a great thing about small space gardens is that there are often plenty of cracks and crevices to store water containers because there might not be enough space for a water butt or an IBC tank for example. Now here Behind these tyres, I'm actually storing around about 12, 14 litres uh, of water and you can see how kind of discreet they were hidden away and because it's very shady, it's keeping them cool and whenever I need to water something, I can just go around, give it a nice water like that. We've got ochre, also known as New Zealand yam, and I can put it back. So just find little places like this um, where you can store uh, water away and then when you need it you know exactly where it is and you can keep these topped up and that's just a clever thing that you can do in a small space. And here we have our uh, new brassica cage which uh, we built a few weeks ago. Um, it's made out of entirely materials that we have uh, reused, found around the house, recycled uh, and our neighbours have contributed bits and pieces from uh, their new build next door as well. The only thing we have actually bought is this netting um, to protect from butterflies, uh, which we have quite a lot of problems with, not to mention the pigeons. Um, so we have planted uh, Brussels sprouts, a favourite for Christmas, um, red uh, Russian kale, uh, field and kraut cabbage, and some broccoli greens and they're interplanted with spring onions and we will harvest it successionally through the season and probably right the way through uh, to it into the winter and we have never actually managed to grow brassicas uh, like this before so we're very happy. The next tip I'd give you is to focus on herbs and the same goes if you're trying to become self-sufficient. The reason why is a little herb goes a long way and I've got marjoram here, uh, lavender, chocolate mint in the front, we've got sage, uh, savoury, rosemary all within a short arm's distance from me and the amount of flavour that you can get from this tiny area is great and also herbs are ideal for growing in pots as well. So if you can dedicate a bit of an area to growing some herbs, then that is going to make a massive difference uh, to your cooking. This is our runner bean structure. 
We found the plant on the internet and built it a few weeks ago. The idea is you plant the runner beans at the back and they grow up and over and it makes it really easy. As the beans grow, they hang down and you can pick it. Underneath here, we had our overwintered spinach, which we've just cleared. I've left a little bit to set seed. And now we're going to plant um, some dwarf French beans, chicory, lettuce, and some new sowings of spinach. And the idea is, is that you get two crops or three or four crops in one space. And also, um, it stops because there's going to be a little bit of dappled shade when the beans are really mature. It stops things like lettuce bolting in the height of the summer sunshine. One of the most unnecessary things for a small space garden is following a crop rotation plan. For me, I think you're far better off just growing a diverse range of different plants in the same area. For example, in this bed, I've got chard, lettuce, brassicas, beans, peas, all sorts of different things growing. And to only rotate or make sure you don't grow the same thing in the same place the following year, if it suffers a disease or if it suffers from a soil borne pest issue, for example, carrot root fly, that should be the only trigger to rotate. Otherwise, it's going to be too complicated and off putting. These are our broad beans. Um, they are in one of our triangular shaped raised beds. Now, they are triangular for historical reasons, uh, which we won't go into now, but in this case, it does lend itself to um, uh, creating a three-sided uh, wigwam. Now, this has uh, several different um, benefits. Um, in this case, for the runner beans, we put horizontal bars all the way around, and it holds the runner beans upright. But it also means we can grow other things up the vertical poles. And what we do is we plant squashes. We've got three different types of squashes here, butternut, uh, uh, chikuri and uh, spaghetti squash. And they were planted a few days ago. And as the beans start to harvest and go over, the squashes will have uh, grown somewhat and we will train them up the poles so we'll be using the vertical space thereafter so this is a, a method of successive planting and uh, it puts a it creates a, a, a double crop in the same space with very little extra effort uh, in the middle uh, you can see we've got a, a milk bottle that's filled up with water and this adds as a counterweight which holds the whole frame in place one thing every gardener knows is just how crucial compost is for growing food. Now, firstly, if I had the choice between two or three tubs of crops, for example, potatoes, over a compost bin, I'd never choose it. I'd always prioritize a compost bin. But the problem with the compost bin is that it takes up valuable growing space, which is an issue if you are lacking space. So you can turn that problem into a solution. What Vera does and what we do here is, um, Vera from Growing to Cook channel, is if you have a compost bin with an open top, you can actually plant things inside of it. For example, squash uh, or courgette, which I'm gonna be putting in a couple of the compost bins over in the other part of the garden. The other thing you can do is to actually design your compost bin so you can actually hang planters off the sides, make the most of the lovely sun microclimate, which is why we've got a sunflower over here as well and some other flowers. And also, if there's an opportunity for you to modify the top of the compost bin, uh, make it flat and then you can actually put pots on top of that. And if you need to add or remove compost, simply remove the pots and then put them back on so you're not actually losing any growing space. Potatoes take up a lot of space. So we do have a potato bed that's growing very nicely at the moment, but I also like to do two things. I like to grow them in tubs, any old container that I can find, and I also like to start them well before the last frosts. So this is a pink fir apple salad potato, and I planted this, three potatoes in this pot, and 
brought it on, on in the greenhouse until frosts had passed. So as you can see, it's really healthy. It has flowered. Ordinarily, I'd probably let it die back a bit more before harvesting, but I just want to have a look with you and see what we've got here. Lovely little salad potatoes, just what we wanted. The biggest asset in any small space vegetable garden is the vertical space rather than the space on the ground. The reason why is because vertical gives you a lot of potential to play around with climate and with sun and creating microclimates. So here I'm growing some runner beans up this trellis, but if you have vertical space around the boundary, for example fences or something, make sure you can adapt them to grow food up them. For example, like I've done here with the trellis, I'm going to continue it along this line. And finally, at the base, create small raised beds where you can first grow things up like peas and runner beans, but then there's space to grow other things like flowers or herbs or anything like that. Here's another quick one. We're growing peas up pigwa cages. Uh, it means that you can have a small pea plantation and inside we've hidden some broccoli. We hope the cabbage whites won't find it, all the pigeons. It's so far so good. So there you have 10 ways to really help you get the most out of your small space garden in terms of growing food. And I just want to say a massive thank you to Tim and Maddie Harland, who are the editors and founders of the Permaculture Magazine for being involved. Now the Permaculture Magazine is an excellent resource for any of us wanting to grow food. And if you get their subscription, either paper and free digital, or by just getting the digital subscription, then you have access to over 28 years of back issues. And if you want to search a particular subject, for example, forest gardening, you can do that. And all of the articles involving forest gardening will come up. So it's a great resource. And if you want to find out more, there'll be a link down below in the video description. So thank you very much for watching and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Goodbye.